Our next speaker is another lady. She is Madam Jeanette Chong Arugo. She is a very well qualified and very experienced lawyer who has offered legal aid in the past to many people who cannot afford the high legal cost in Singapore. She is a very deserving lady. She has a heart for people, for the common people. We One morning, I woke up to a strange new world. Going to my usual kopitiam, a young man who I have never seen before came to take my order. I said to him, <laughs> He looked at me blankly as if I was speaking a foreign language. Then I saw a thin old woman with many wrinkles hobbling over to my table to clear the plates and wipe the table clean for me. I thought I should be serving her, why is she serving me? When I boarded my bus to work, I found most of the seats on the bus had disappeared. I had to stand on my high heels while clinging onto the handrails all the way for the next hour. What a nightmare! I have been trying to wake up from this bad dream, but find that I can't. Is this Singapore? Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Singaporeans, here we are at the end of the campaign period. In a few hours' time, you are all required to cool off. <laughs> For our government is worried you might become emotional after hearing all the exciting rally speeches and you might be in danger of voting rashly. <laughs> our government thinks you should not vote with your heart. You must all vote without feeling, without emotion. So our government says you all need one day to cool off. It is good for you. So, is it the role of our government to care for you? Is it the role of the government to protect you? Is it the role of the government to keep you happy? But do you feel cared for? Do you feel protected? Do you feel happy with your life? No! If you don't feel cared for, protected, and happy, then our government is sleeping on the job. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Okay. Let me tell you a story of a woman I met in Mountbatten. Let's call her Madam J. If you are here in the audience, Madam J, I would like to thank you for sharing your story with me. Now, Madam J is a divorcee with two teenage children and an 80-year-old bedridden mother. This family of four lives in a rental SIT flat in Old Airport Road. Madam J earns $2,100 a month before netting off her CPF. After CPF, she's left with 1680. She's entitled to only partial subsidy and has to pay $500 a month to, in rent to HDB. This leaves her with only $1180 per month to support her bedridden mother, two school teenage daughters and herself. This means each person has less than $300 to live on every month. Despite visiting her MP on several occasions, she has not managed to get any public assistance because her income exceeds the cutoff for assistance. This is a testament to the one-size-fits-all policies which are uncompassionate and have no heart for the people. What is Madam J going to do? How will she manage? Shall we blame her for having a failed marriage, for being a divorcee? Shall we advise her to sue her ex-husband for maintenance? 
Should we ask her to work harder, upgrade her skills so she can get a better paying job? I will tell you another story. Mr. S is 70 years old. He lives alone in a rented flat in Mountbatten. He has no close family. Some eight years back, his wife divorced him after 32 years of marriage. Since then, he has not spoken to his ex-wife or children. He is now too ill and too old to hold down a regular job. So he's living off his dwindling savings. He's unable to rent from HDB because under HDB rules, he has to pair up with another single and he cannot find anyone to pair up with. So he has no choice but to pay $300 a month to rent a room. Every day he worries about medical costs. What is Mr. S going to do? How will he manage? He says his savings will be enough for him provided he dies within the next eight years and provided he does not encounter serious medical problems before then. Shall we blame Mr. S for not having a family? Shall we advise him to sue his children for maintenance? Shall we ask him why didn't he save more money? <laughs> Unfortunately, neither Madam J nor Mr. S are eligible for public assistance under the MCYS Public Assistance Scheme. Yes! In fact, very few are. Due to the stringent criteria set by MCYS, there are less than 3,000 Singaporeans receiving public assistance out of 3.2 million Singapore citizens. Now, how much does a person receiving public assistance get? As of 1st April this year, a single adult household receives $400 per month. Back in 2007, a single adult household was receiving only $260 per month. At that time, Dr. Lily Neo did a rough survey of her constituents on public assistance and found that a lot of single adults on public assistance had to skip at least one meal a day to get by on $260 per month. By her estimate, a single adult household on public assistance actually needs at least $400 per month. So in February 2007, Dr. Lily Neo asked Parliament to consider increasing the rate from $260 per month to $400 per month. Her request was refused by Minister for Community, Youth and Sports, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan. Whoa! 